Hello, my name is Morgan Oliveira. And I'm Jessica McCall. We are nurses here at Stanford Healthcare with the Blood and Marrow Transplant Program. We are here to teach you about your central lung care. The purpose of this video is to teach you how to safely care for your central venous catheter at home. In this video, we will review some important concepts, such as the importance of good hand washing, how to change your dressing, how to flush the catheter to prevent clotting, and how to change the valves. We will also discuss what to do in case of line emergencies and review the signs that may indicate an infection. Let's get started. Here are a few suggestions before we get started. While you are learning, have your catheter care instructions available. Always gather all your equipment before you start. Plan a specific time for your catheter care so you will not be interrupted. This will decrease the chance of forgetting to do something. Since the catheter enters directly into your bloodstream, it is important to wash your hands before handling the catheter or touching the skin around the exit site to prevent an infection. Remove your watch, rings, and all other jewelry. Wash the front and back of your hands vigorously with soap and warm water. Use a liquid soap instead of bar soap. Clean under your fingernails. Then rinse and dry your hands thoroughly with a clean towel or paper towel. Use the towel to turn off the faucet. Once you have done this, be careful not to touch your face, hair, or clothes. If you accidentally touch them, wash your hands again before continuing. As an alternative to soap and water, you may use hand sanitizer. Prepare a clean work surface. Use surfaces that will not absorb liquids, for example, for mica, plastic, metal, or marble. Do not use wood or tiled surfaces. A clean cookie sheet works very well. Wash the work area with alcohol or antibacterial wipes and allow the area to dry. Gather all the supplies needed for the dressing change. You will need three alcohol swabs, one chloroprep swab, one transparent dressing with CHG gel pad, one Cavalon no sting barrier swab, and a roll of tape. Wash your hands thoroughly or use hand sanitizer. Open the supplies carefully without touching the contents. Leave the contents in the packages. After preparing your supplies, wash your hands thoroughly or use hand sanitizer. The dressing on the insertion site must be changed once a week or whenever it becomes loose. Gently remove the old dressing by peeling the dressing up from the bottom towards the insertion site. Work low and slow, peeling the dressing back onto itself. Prevent the gel pad from separating from the film by pacing a thumb and forefinger on the gel pad while removing the dressing. Once the dressing is removed, you may discard it. Inspect the insertion site for signs of infection, redness, swelling, tenderness, or drainage. If any of these are present, or if you have a fever of 100.4 or higher, call your nurse or physician immediately. After removing the old dressing, you need to wash your hands again or use a hand sanitizer before you take the next steps of applying the new clean dressing. Start by touching only the edges of the first alcohol wipe. 
Remove it from the package and clean around the insertion site in a circular motion. For better control, try opening up the alcohol wipe and wrapping it around your index finger. Start where the catheter is inserted into the chest and move outward in a circular motion about 3 inches in diameter. Imagine a target and start on the center. Move outward away from it. Repeat with a second alcohol wipe. Discard each item in the trash as you go. Use the last alcohol wipe and wrap it around the catheter to gently clean it. Start at the insertion site and move along the catheter away from the chest and towards the catheter lumens. Do not pull on the catheter and do not go back up towards the insertion site. Next, you will use the chloroprep swab. In order to use, squeeze the wings together to release the chlorhexidine into the sponge. Use the chloroprep swab to clean around the insertion site, moving both back and forth and in a circular motion at the same time. Clean in an outward and back and forth motion for 30 seconds. Allow the area to dry. While drying, do not blow on or fan the area. Drying may take one to three minutes. Once the chloroprep is dry, use the Cavalon No Sting Barrier Swab to paint the skin underneath the dressing to help protect it from where the adhesive touches the skin. Start approximately one inch away from the insertion site and apply where the dressing adhesive will be in contact with the skin. Again, allow the area to dry. Do not blow on or fan the area. This may take up to one to three minutes. While the no sting barrier is drying, carefully remove the paper backing of the transparent dressing. While holding the wings of the dressing, Center the gel pad over the insertion site and place it on the skin with the notch edge down toward the lumens of the catheter. Be careful not to stretch the dressing when applying it. Once the dressing is in place, remove the white paper border that is on top of the dressing. Smooth out the transparent dressing to remove wrinkles. Then remove the pre-cut paper tape strips from the frame and use them to further secure the dressing, placing one under the lumens on the bottom of the dressing and one on top of the lumens. If needed, you can secure the catheter to the chest with paper tape to prevent it from being pulled or tugged. Tear off one or two pieces of the perforated tape and apply it to the bottom of the dressing. Place it over the notch where the tails come out of the dressing. The dressing change is now complete. Let's move on to flushing the catheter to prevent clots and changing the valves. Each lumen of the catheter must be flushed daily with heparin in order to keep the line open and free from clots. The presence of heparin stops the blood from clotting in the catheter line. Each lumen must have a valve in place at all times. The heparin is injected through this valve and will sit inside the line until it is used or flushed again. Before you get started, wash your hands thoroughly or use hand sanitizer. Gather your supplies. You will need two alcohol wipes and two heparin flushes, one for each of the lumens. After setting up your supplies, wash your hands thoroughly or use hand sanitizer. To begin, clean the end of the valve with an alcohol wipe. When cleaning, twist the alcohol wipe back and forth at the end of the valve using friction. 
Without letting go of the valve or touching the clean end, remove the cap on the heparin and attach the syringe to the valve of the catheter. Open the clamp on the line to be flushed. Slowly push the heparin into the catheter. If you have a syringe with 5 ml of heparin, only push in 3 ml of the heparin into the catheter. Remove the syringe. Close the clamp on the catheter after you remove the syringe. Repeat for each lumen. If you meet any resistance while flushing the catheter, check to see if the clamp is closed. If it is, open it and flush the line. If the clamp is open and you meet resistance, do not use force to flush the catheter. Immediately remove the syringe, clamp the line, and call your provider. Never forcefully flush the catheter because you may break it or push a clot or bacteria into the bloodstream. The valves on the end of the catheter lumens need to be changed every seven days. To change the valves on the catheter, you will need two valves, one for each lumen of the catheter. You will also need four alcohol wipes, two for each lumen of the catheter, and two pre-filled heparin syringes. The valves we are showing you in this video are called Max Plus. From time to time, we will change the type of valves we use. The principle for flushing remains mostly the same for all valves. Prepare your supplies by opening the packages for the alcohol wipes and valves. After setting up your supplies, wash your hands again or use hand sanitizer. To make things easier, you can connect the heparin flushes to the new valves before placing the valves on the catheter. To do this, peel back the wrapper of the valve. Without touching the end, remove the cap from the flush and attach them together. Holding the valve up, push the heparin into the valve to clear any air. This will take gentle force. Make sure the catheter is clamped. This ensures that blood will not come out of the line once the valve is removed. Clean the connection between the catheter and the valve with an alcohol wipe. Be sure to use friction. Unscrew the old valve and throw away. Clean the end of the catheter with a new alcohol wipe. Tightly screw the new valve in place. Open the clamp on the line to be flushed. Slowly push the heparin into the catheter. Remove the syringe. Close the clamp on the catheter after you remove the syringe. Repeat this for each line. Develop a system for flushing and changing the valves so you know which one has been changed first and always do it in this order. Always make sure the clamp is closed when changing the valves and when the line is not in use. Do not let go of the catheter once the old valve has been removed and do not touch the open part of the catheter. If for some reason this occurs, you must re-scrub with a new alcohol wipe. An important part of caring for your catheter is knowing what to do for a catheter emergency. A catheter emergency is when your catheter breaks or leaks. The first thing to do if this happens is to clamp the catheter using the purple clamps provided in your take-home kit. Apply the clamp between the damaged area and your skin. Do not attempt to flush the catheter. Contact your physician immediately and go straight to the closest emergency room so that repairs can be made. Signs of infection may include a fever of 100.4 or higher, tenderness, redness, warmth, swelling,
Drainage at the catheter site or feeling chilled after flushing the catheter. If you develop any of these signs, contact your nurse and or doctor immediately. Initially, caring for your catheter may be overwhelming, but don't worry, with practice you'll soon become an expert.